Don't you just love it? Love what? Tiffany's. And it's not just Audrey Hepburn in the 1961 film Breakfast at Tiffany's. Generations of Americans have ooed and awed over Tiffany rings and bracelets and necklaces, even if they can't afford to buy, which is just fine with the folks who run this place. To aspire to be a Tiffany & Company customer, to dream about Tiffany is certainly um, a powerful part of, of what happens here. Probably Tiffany Michael Kowalski, Tiffany's chairman and CEO, says it's been that way since the company began 175 years ago. We were a young country, growing very rapidly. Luxury here was defined not as something aristocratic, but rather we had an inclusive, welcoming uh, vision of luxury. Long before this flagship Fifth Avenue store was built in 1940, Charles Lewis Tiffany and John Young opened a stationary and fancy goods store on Broadway in Lower Manhattan. The year was 1837. And their two dads gave them each the grand sum of $500, and they opened Tiffany & Company with a capital of $1,000. And its first day of sales were a magnificent $4.95. <laughs> John Loring, the company's historian and former design chief, says Young soon bowed out. But Charles Tiffany proved to be a marketing genius. He hired some of the best American silversmiths, whose sumptuous pieces started winning international prizes and can now be found in New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art as well as in the company's private collection. Pieces like this American Indian-inspired loving cup. It's fantastic. It's, it's a conceptually slightly preposterous and therefore very satisfying <laughs> object. <laughs> but isn't it wonderful? By the mid-1800s, Tiffany jewelry was all the rage. Even Abraham Lincoln knew just where to buy seed pearls for his wife to wear at his inauguration. Did he come himself and choose he them? He came in himself and chose them with Charles Lewis Tiffany, the owner of the store. And the rumor go, goes that he wondered if the president of the United States got a discount at Tiffany & Company. And Charles Lewis Tiffany said, I'm terribly sorry, but no one gets a discount at Tiffany & Company. <laughs> And that famous Tiffany blue used in all the packaging? Chosen because it was the favorite color of Empress Eugenie, wife of Napoleon III. And she also was considered the most stylish woman in the world. She was the supermodel, fashion arbiter of the universe. After she was deposed in 1870, Charles Tiffany, who was known as the King of Diamonds, bought some of her jewels, like this diamond and emerald piece. But Tiffany is actually known for very simple diamond engagement ring settings, introduced in 1886. Today, diamonds are about a quarter of Tiffany's $3.6 billion in annual sales. Much of the jewelry is handcrafted in New York. And while you can pick up a blue diamond bauble like this, for a mere $10 million, this yellow diamond, discovered in South Africa in 1877, is considered priceless. Being reset in honor of the company's big anniversary, it is the official Tiffany diamond, weighing in at just over 128 carats. And Charles Lewis Tiffany bought it for the grand sum of $18,000. That was a very good investment. <laughs> If Charles Tiffany was known for marketing, his son, Louis Comfort Tiffany, was known for artistry. And it wasn't just those famous stained glass lamps. He also designed beautiful jeweled pieces, often using American gems. These are Montana sapphires. In this Louis Comfort really? Tiffany necklace, beautiful. the moonstones, of course, from Southeast Asia, but the sapphires all come from the Yago Gulch in Montana. And here, um, Louis Comfort and Tiffany's used a rather unusual thing. The orange cabochon in that beautiful right nasturtium there. brooch is a piece of orange serpentine from New Jersey, the only example of a New Jersey gemstone we have in the Tiffany archives. 
Nice to see it, and they don't get enough respect. You might not realize some of the things Tiffany makes. Trophies for the Super Bowl, NASCAR, and horse racing. Lady Bird Johnson ordered Tiffany China for the White House. And back in 1885, the company created the version of the Great Seal of the United States that still graces the back of every U.S. dollar bill. Tiffany design is American design and has really permeated every aspect of America. And whether people recognize it as such or not, it's with them every day. The big ticket jewelry has been worn by everyone from Elizabeth Taylor to Kate Winslet. But just about anyone can own a piece of Tiffany silver, starting at about $100. That's caused complaints that the brand has been diluted. But Chairman Michael Kowalski is not bothered by that or by sniping about Rubedo, the company's latest product, a mix of gold, silver, and copper that some call a gimmick. It's beautiful. Again, that's where we begin. So you don't care if some people no. are critical of it. <laughs> you know, Tiffany. You know, Tiffany has always had an extraordinary history of of product innovation going back many, many years. So I think part of the challenge of being an innovator is surprising people and perhaps upsetting some. And let's face it: over the course of 175 years, we've all learned what's meant by the Tiffany standard. You can go anywhere in the United States and the word Tiffany will be used synonymous with quality. You'll find the Tiffany laundromat, the Tiffany <laughs> lumber yard, <laughs> everything Tiffany, and probably there's a, there's a nice little baby girl born every minute in the United States named Tiffany. Mm -hmm.